This is a Friday Shoes production. This is lesson 8-6 in our books on page 441. Our target is I can write and graph inequalities. Let's talk about inequalities. In chapter 1, you learn that a mathematical sentence that contains is greater than or is less than is called an inequality. When used to compare a variable and a number, inequalities can describe a range of values, more than one. In this case, you see here, when you have that symbol right there, that is called the is less than sign. So when it's sitting by itself like this, we call that is less than. This one right here is called the is greater than sign. So again, when it's just sitting out there like this, we call it is greater than. Let's look at these inequalities right here. It says write an inequality for each sentence. So we're gonna, we're gonna be coming up with a variable and a number in each one of these. It says luggage, a suitcase must weigh less than 40 pounds. Well, we're talking about weight here, so let's use the word or the letter W to represent the suitcase's weight. And if you see the inequality right here says the weight is less than 40 pounds. So the weight must be less than 40 pounds right there is the inequality for that one. How about you must be over 12 years old to play? That means it's going to be greater than 12, right? Correct. So we have A is the person's age. So we'll use A. A has got to be greater than 12. There it is. You have greater than 12 as your age. All right, how about you pause the video, try these two, come on back, see how you do. All right, A says, you must be older than 17 to see the movie. So age, let's use A, and then you have to be older, which means greater than. So we have A is greater than 17. All right, how about B? Members of a swim team must be under 15 years of age. They can ha they have to be less than 15. Well, here we go, age again. And let's say that the age has to be less than 15. So there's the inequality. All right, the symbols is less than or equal to or greater than or equal to combine is less than and is greater than with a part of the equal sign. So again, this one right here is called is less than or equal to, and this one right here is called is greater than or equal to, when you see them just standing by themselves. All right, let's take a look at the examples. It says, write an inequality for each sentence. Roller coaster, you must be at least, oh, they forgot the space there, be at least 48 inches tall to ride the roller coaster. Well, let's take a look. Let H be the person's height. And then we would say that the height has to be greater than or equal to 48 inches. So you can be 48 inches or taller to ride this roller coaster. How about number four? You must be 12 years of age or younger to order from the children's menu. Means you got to be less, right? Or 12. So the age, A, we'll call that, has to be less than or equal to 12. You can be 12 and still eat, but you got to be. 12 or less. That's what it would look like as an inequality. How about this? You try these two on your on your own. Come on back, see how you did. So here's C, voting. You must be 18 years of age or older to vote. We got to be 18 or older. So your age has to be greater than or equal to 18. I used A again. How about this last one? A fuel tank holds at most 16 gallons of gasoline. That means you're going to have gasoline gallons of 16 or less. So let's use G for gallons. And the gallons have to be in that tank either 16 or less, which means G is less than or equal to 16. Now they throw at you a bunch of different uh, combinations of words that represent each one of the symbols there. I'll just point out a couple of them to you. You can read them at your own here. Uh, these, This is pretty popular in our book, is no more than would be using this symbol called the is less than or equal to. And is no less than is is greater than or equal to. Same with is at most, that's less than or equal to. And is at least, that's greater than or equal to. So we see these types of combinations of words, that's what you should be thinking. You need a lot of practice with those to recognize them. Now it says inequalities with variables are open sentences. When the variable is replaced with a number, the inequality becomes either true or false. So they're going to give you an inequality. You're going to plug some numbers in, or a number in, and see if it's true or false. So take a look at this first one. They say, hey, a is 5, but here's the inequality. a plus 2 is greater than 8. So let's plug 5 in there and see what happens. Well, take out the a, put the 5 in. 
Now you're asking yourself, is 7 greater than 8? Well, no, it isn't. Since 7 is not greater than 8, we would say that 7 greater than 8 is false. I like this little line that they use there. That's what I would do. How about 6? 10 is less than or equal to 7 minus x when x is equal to negative 3. So we're going to plug this negative 3 in here. That's the first step. And then we're going to ask ourselves, is that true? True or false? So you can see they put the negative 3 in right there. 7 minus negative 3, that's actually 7 plus 3. And that's why you got 10 here. So is 10 less than or equal to 10? It's a good one. Let's find out. Well, ask yourself, is 10 less than 10? No. Is 10 equal to 10? Yes. If one of them is yes, then it's true. So even though while 10 is less than 10 is not or is false, 10 equals 10 is true. So 10 is less than or equal to 10 is true because of the or statement, the word or. So one of them is true, then there, we would say that that statement is true. All right, for the given value, state whether each inequality is true or false. You try these two on, or these three on your own, see how you do. First one, you have n is equal to 18, plug it into the inequality given and see if it works out. So we rewrite the inequality, plug the 18 in. 18 minus 6 is 12, I believe, so we have 12 is less than 15. The question mark means, is that true or false? So is 12 less than 15? It sure is. We call that true. How about F here? You, you got 8. You're going to plug that in for the P. Do the math. See if it's true. Is negative 3P greater than or equal to 24 going to be true or false when you plug the 8 in there? I don't know. Well, what's negative 3 times 8? That's uh, negative 24. So is negative 24 greater than or equal to 24? No. That's false. And I would even draw a line through and say that's not right. How about this one? Negative 2 is greater than 5y minus 7 when y is equal to 1. So we take our 1, we plug it into the y. And when you take 5 times 1, that's 5. And then 5 minus 7 is negative 2. So we have this statement here. It says, is negative 2 greater than negative 2? Well, look at that now. Is negative 2 greater than negative 2? No. Negative 2 is equal to negative 2. So we would say false. That is not true. Moving on here, it says inequalities can be graphed on a number line. So this is the second part to this, is learning how to graph these. Since it is impossible to show all the values that make an inequality true, an open or closed circle is used to indicate whether their values be, where their values begin, and an arrow to the left or right is used to show that they continue in the indicated direction. Let me show you a couple examples here, and we'll have you do a couple. It says graph each inequality on a number line. Well, we're talking about, and this is how I like to read these, the numbers less than 3. All numbers that are less than 3. Well, what does that look like? Well, here's what you want to do. It says place an open circle. Open circle looks like this. So we place an open circle at 3 on a number line and then draw a line and an arrow to the left because those are all the numbers that are less than 3. So here's what they've done. They've actually taken that, circled three, and drawn an arrow to the left, meaning every single number to the left of three will make this true. You take any number on this line, any number that you can find on that line, and it will actually make that equality true. Now it says the open circle means that the number three is not included in the graph. Think about that. If you were to take three and plug it into this right here, is that true? No, that's not true. So we would say that that's not true. So therefore, that's why there's an open circle. It does not include three. How about this one right here? Almost Very similar to the number seven, number eight. How about n is greater than or equal to three? Well, place a closed circle. What does a closed circle look like? Well, it's an open circle that's been filled in. So it's closed circle. Close it in, or close it out. It says place a closed circle at 3, then draw a line and an arrow to the right. All right, same thing. I'm talking about all numbers, and again, this is how I would read it, all numbers that are greater than or equal to 3. Well, on a number line, those are all to the right of 3. And because they have the equal sign, this little line right here is the equal sign here. So 3 is included. That's 
why we have a closed circle. The closed circle means the number three is included in the graph. So three is equal to three. It's not greater than three, but it is equal to three. Any number on this line, any number that you cover up going all the way to the right, it keeps going on forever, will make that statement true. N is greater than or equal to three. All right, here's four for you all. Give it a shot. Come on back, see how you did. All right, first one, X is greater than two. X is greater than two. How do we graph all the numbers? Again, this is how I read this. All the numbers that are greater than two. Well, I know it's a greater than symbol. And you see my hint over here. If you have a less than or greater than symbol, you'll always have an open circle. When you have a less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, you'll always have a closed circle. It's a fast way to remember it. So I know I'm going to have an open circle here. And I'm going to be pointing to the right because all the numbers that are greater than 2 are to the right. So open circle on 2, and then I would draw an arrow to the right. That's kind of how I do it. I don't ever cover up the line itself. Kind of draw it above it. How about i? x is less than 1, or numbers less than 1. That's how I see it. Well, again, it's going to be an open circle because of my hint that I gave you there. And it's all the numbers that are less than 1. Uh, these are all the numbers that are less than 1. They're to the left. How about x is less than or equal to 5? Well, again, that's a closed circle because of my hint. And I would draw that closed circle at 5, which means 5 is included. And then it's all the numbers that are less than or equal to. There you go to the left. That equal sign is covered up by because we have the closed circle. And then the less than is covered up by that arrow pointing to the left. How about x is greater than or equal to negative 4? It's going to be a closed circle to the equaling of negative 4. You can include negative 4. And it's any number that's greater than that negative 4, which is to the right. That's how you graph inequalities. Now, for better understanding, of course, you can rewatch this video or parts of it or read the examples in the book. They do have good examples. Or you can watch a couple of personal tutor videos that we have online on the online textbook. As usual, this has been a Friday Shoes production.